So now let's continue with um, Berlin. Um, this is uh, the main position of uh, the opening. Um, now we have reached uh, the ending. And this ending was um, putting a lot of white players off. Um, and that was one of them. But in fact, um, I think by now there have been some recent developments. And um, they're actually looking quite interesting. So the latest trend here is H3. Uh, the reason uh, for this move is um, as opposed to uh, to the old continuation or to the old main continuation knight c3 is a slight gain in flexibility uh, white knight will be able to uh, develop to d2 under favorable circumstances and um, other than that h3 is a really useful move in uh, most of the vari variations uh, the one line where the knight develops to d2 uh, can be seen from two games uh, played by Fabiano Caruana. After bishop d7, rook d1, bishop e7, g4, white plays knight d2, and um, it's clear that uh, now it's more or less the ideal position for the white knight coming to f3 or to e4. And um, in uh, both of these games the following position was reached and now white played rook uh, d3 uh, which is a really difficult move uh, to find. Uh, the rook is uh, supporting um, the knight on f3 and the pawn on h3 but this is uh, of course not the only um, uh, not the only reason for this move. Uh, the other uh, is the tactical justification which we will see after we make the natural move h5 and now bishop g5 works and now the rook the other one joins uh, the action on d1 or e1 and um, in fact this becomes uh, very tactical uh, now after f6 this actually looks uh, good for black um, optically but then after takes takes rook d1 uh, Black, in fact, cannot uh, maintain his um, uh, his stability in the center, and the bishops they start uh, they start to hang quite badly along the e file and the d file. So um, this is a tactical justification, and um, otherwise White uh, plans to continue with Bishop g5, and it seems that Black is having uh, some problems in this position. I mean, Grishuk played h6 here, knight d4, rook e8, bishop f4, c5, knight f5, bishop f8, and uh, looked uh, to be um, in control, um, although in a slightly passive way. And um, I guess that white could be uh, pressing in this endgame. Um, in a later game uh, against Caruana, Negi tried c5, bishop g5, c4, but this did not look positionally very sound, and after rook d4 and king h2, uh, what actually got a very serious advantage and went on to win a very nice game. So, in this line, of course, uh, one has to analyze it further, but at least it seems that uh, at the moment uh, the trend is definitely favoring white, and most of the players after h3, they play king e8 and after knight c3 this transposes back into the main line having um, thus a limited black's options and now in this um, in this position there are of course many moves and it's impossible to cover all of them um, in any reasonable way uh, for the purposes of this DVD uh, so let's concentrate uh, on what has been uh, played uh, recently at the top level um, my attention has been drawn to the move uh, b6 uh, after uh, the game Topal of Carlson in St. Louis 2014. And uh, it seems that this move has been neglected for too long for no good reason, because in practice Black has been actually having really good results. I mean, this move b6 was played previously by Ivanchuk and Kramnik and then forgotten for, uh, for a couple of years after that. And um, now let's let's have a look at what 
uh, white can do. Uh, Topalov played bishop f4, and after bishop b4, knight e4, bishop a6. I mean, this is the idea of b6, this rapid development of the bishops to b4 and a6. Um, it turned out that um, black is already in a very decent shape. After rook c1, white is already forced to make this clumsy move because rook d1 runs into uh, bishop e2. So rook c1, uh, bishop e2 nonetheless. And now after, say, knight h2, bishop c4, c3, bishop e7, it begins to look like a very uh, harmonious uh, Berlin uh, for black. So Topalov played knight fd2 instead. Bishop takes d2, knight d2, knight d4. And now with opposite colored uh, bishops and uh, slightly clumsy structure uh, or slightly clumsy uh, setup of white pieces, uh, white has nothing better than repeat moves after bishop e3 and bishop f4, which is actually what happened in the game. And um, and um, this being said, it's also difficult to suggest something better for white after b6. Uh, Vichy Anand tried rook e1 against Ivanchuk uh, some years ago, but also this um, ran into bishop b4. And um, uh, in fact, uh, once black manages to pin the knight on c3, it's clear that white will have to play the opposite colored uh, bishop's position. Bishop d2, bishop e6, g4, knight e7, and after some uh, natural play, uh, black actually had zero problems in the game and uh, managed to draw quite comfortably. So this was um, not a solution either, and I'm uh, wondering what uh, white can do after b6 at all. Probably rook d1. Uh, is the continuation uh, to be analyzed further. Uh, white is um, stepping out of bishop a6 uh, with tempo, making it um, less effective. And now after bishop b7, this is a generally played move, bishop f4, white uh, begins uh, to uh, create ideas connected to e6. So this is a pretty dynamic approach. And now... Um, uh, this position really becomes very sharp and requires uh, some detailed analysis, which is uh, not the purpose of this DVD. The purpose of this DVD is uh, to show you where the current trends are going, and this position will definitely be one of the position, uh, one of the positions to uh, to look to look at in um, the coming month. And um, here it seems that whatever black does, uh, white has some dynamic possibilities connected with e6 and um, it is uh, quite possible that um, um, something along these lines uh, could pose problems for black so I looked at king e7, bishop takes c7, c5, knight g5 and now uh, it really becomes very complex with um, all the pieces hanging for instance after h6, knight d6 um, the g5 uh, knight is hanging, the bishop on b7 is hanging, and the bishop on b4 is in some trouble after the coming c3. So a really messy position which uh, needs further analysis. But at least it looks interesting uh, from white's perspective. Uh, so after bishop f4, um, rook c8 has been played um, in a game Polga Carlsen. This was a rapid chess game uh, some years ago. And uh, in that game, uh, white played a4 and um, I'm not sure if this is the best approach I wonder if for instance e6 is also reasonable here and uh, I figure that after f takes e6 knight g5 or rook e1 uh, white actually has uh, some decent pressure for the sacrificed pawn and okay the sacrificed pawn will be won back pretty quickly. Uh, Carlson's idea was most likely bishop d6, e takes f7, king takes f7, and um, I wonder if uh, somewhere around here white can actually be um, a bit better, but uh, this might actually require some, some more analysis, but at least it seems that black's 
choices are not um, not as easy as one would think but definitely looks like a line um, to pay attention to and uh, I would suggest why to look at all this E6 connected possibilities seems like this could be interesting stuff and um, of course there is um, apart from B6 there is a, a main line now this combination of the moves H5 and King E8 for black as the response to Knight C3 H3 uh, became uh, more or less uh, the way for black to handle the Berlin and um, now let's take a look at um, what white can do after that in our next video.